So today's question is simply, Elliot, how do you stay motivated to keep training and staying physically fit? You see, the thing is, I don't need motivation to keep training and stay physically fit. Training and lifting and building muscle and building strength is who I believe myself to be. Uh, when you are a kid and you have certain experiences that solidify a sort of ego within, it's really hard to break that later on. So for example, the fat kid in elementary school will more than likely be the fat guy when he's 30 or 40 years old. Because not only did the external environment support a fatness, or in my case, it supported fitness and health. Um, I'll tell you more about that in a moment. But both of those types of being, you know, fat person, a fit person, during that stage of their life, elementary school being young, of course, there's an environment that's associated with it, right? Like the fat kid probably grew up in a home where there was a lot of junk food because mom and dad were probably fat too. Uh, growing up in a fit home made me believe that I was meant to be fit. Um, my parents were healthy people, bought like healthy food before it was a cool thing, like in the 1980s. Um, and exercise, not only that, but my uncle who lived with me, my mother's brother, um, he was a marathon runner, he was a bodybuilder, he was a martial artist, he was a gymnast. I mean, he was an all-around athlete. So watching him grow up, being trained by him, living in a home where health and fitness wasn't like, a, like an add-on, it wasn't like you know something that we did as a family, it was like who we were. It just, it was embedded in the culture of my home. I don't know how else to say it, and it's not like, I'm not virtue signaling, I'm just saying that that's the way my parents were. You know, they thought about health, it was important to them. And, um, and the same thing with exercise. So it's who I believe myself to be. It's like baked in to who I am, as opposed to the fat kid who grew up eating junk food and parents never did anything. It's baked into who, you, who he is. So when something's baked in, especially because it's, uh, you know, the environment supports it, um, it's hard for it to go away. Now, going back again to this like conditioning process, not only was the environment conducive of being healthy and fit and you know lifelong fitness for me, um, and the opposite for the other person, but then I had experiences. You'll have experiences that support that identity. So let's talk about the fat kid for a moment. So fat kid grows up eating junk food. It's not his fault, but you, now he's stamped with fatness and he's gonna have experiences that sort of um, solidify and like affirm that conception of himself. Other kids will maybe call him fat, maybe not today because all the kids are fat. But you know, I'm thinking about me growing up in the 1980s. Other kids will call him fat, he'll have fat boy experiences, fat boy ex um, traumas, right? Like uh, bad experiences and, and, and you know, embarrassments and stuff like that. So all those, all those like shocks to the system that's associated with a self-conception further bake in that concept of yourself. I had a, a, a proud self-esteem associated with being, I was stronger than all the kids. You know, I won the pull-up contest in school faster than all the kids. I would win the sprinting in all of school. I, I captain the football team. So now as a 45 year old man like I that I don't need motivation to do or be any of those things like it's baked into who I am in fact if I if I wanted to change who I am it would be really really hard because like if I don't train uh, my self concept is being challenged if I don't have an if I'm in an environment where I can't exercise or my body starts to you know, to, to, to languish because of lack of exercise or, 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 or eating poorly, my ego will freak out because I, I don't know who this person is, what's going on. Like, it, 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 it subconsciously, with no will of my own, my body and my mind will just like gravitate towards what's gonna make me be the thing that I believe myself to be, and the same thing is for you. That's why the fat kid, when he grows up, he, he stays the fat adult because his, he, of course, had those experiences. They're baked in, traumatized. It's who he believes himself to be. And he's going to, the, the, the brain is always going to be like, you know, I think they call it the, uh, is it the amygdala? But there's a part of the brain that like 
has a set point, and if you go, if you if you move away from that set point, it sort of freaks out and wants to bring you back to that comfort zone. This is why it's very hard to change because you have comfort zones. You're stuck in a comfort zone. The fat kid's stuck in a comfort zone, comfort zone, because maybe it's not that comfortable, especially when he gets older. But it's a it's a it's a familiar place. Health and fitness for me, lifting and strongman for me, powerlifting and strength training for me is just a natural set point. And again, I'm not saying this because I'm bragging, I'm saying this because, you know, this is just facts. Now, what would be useful for this video would be to talk about, to talk about how to break any unresourceful self-conceptions. I mean, that would be very helpful to a lot of people. Uh, those that seek this often go to like, hypnotists and stuff like that to like change their mind. They'll use uh, mantras and visualizations and um, faking it until you make it like Tony Robbins says. These I believe are all really good things. What I think uh, stops most people from, uh, or that from being effective for most people is because, is for two things. You know, if you're really trying to change yourself, it's, it's, Alan Watts would say, it's like trying to touch this finger with the tip of this finger or trying to bite your own teeth. It's like, you know, you're, you're, you're working on your, yourself is working on yourself and it's not an easy thing to do, but there's a sort of science behind it, right? You have two minds. You have a conscious mind and a subconscious mind. Your conscious mind can imprint on your subconscious mind and your subconscious mind, which is like a female, it's receptive as a vagina, you're, think of your head head as like a penis, right? And it has the seeds of what you want to grow, but it needs to be, it needs to penetrate and release that seed into the heart, into your subconscious, right? And this is sort of, this is like scientific, right? So, I, you know, I'm not making up, this is not woo woo stuff. This is like, as a man believed in his heart, so is he, it's biblical too. So, and, and, and Jesus says this stuff also. He's like, hey, if you believe that you're boning that girl, then you are boning her, even if it's only in your mind. You know, he's just like, you know, he talks about adultery. He's like, if you lust after that woman, you're committing the same sin as actually doing the thing because everything in the physical world begins as a thought. It's, creation is a spectrum, right? So if you believe yourself to be a thing, it's just a matter of time before you will become it, but there are some parameters that are associated with it that make that tough. Time, which is one of them, right? Like you, you gotta be consistent, right? If you're gonna change your self-concept, you've gotta to affirm to yourself that you're a different type of person uh, by putting yourself in that type of environment, speaking to yourself in a different way, but it's gotta be like consistent. And also the intensity needs to be there. You can't just think of yourself a different way and be a different way. Thoughts are the starting point of a spectrum of creation. The thought becomes the, the flesh, the word becomes the flesh. Word is pattern, the word becomes the flesh means that you know it starts in the mind, it starts in the head, it starts with the father, but it must pass through the mother, which is the heart, the receptive uh, subconscious part of yourself, which takes that seed, takes that word, takes that pattern and makes it physical instantly through feeling. So you can't, you can't change who you are if you don't change the way you feel about yourself, right? So, wow, Elliot, now it's getting more complicated. No, it's really not. You think of yourself a different way, but then you have to have the feeling that's associated with that new way that you're being. This is another thing that's sort of biblical also, uh, where if you, uh, the, the, I think Jesus, or there's some story somewhere, I can't, I'm, I'm, I'm blowing, not thinking clearly right now. Just woke up, first time I'm talking, talking to you. Where, you know, the, the person who has much will have more, and the person who has little will have less. There's a, there's, a, there's a story in the Bible where Jesus talks about this, and it's like not fair. It's like a weird story where Jesus ultimately at the end says, those who have a lot will have more. And he like praises those people. And those who have a little, will ha what, what he has will be taken from him. Somebody tell me the passage down below. You know what I'm talking about. So if you have little, what you, little you have will be taken away from you. What is Jesus saying in that? He's basically saying, hey, you think yourself a pauper, a poor person, a, a loser, and therefore you're going to lose what you, what you have, right? It's, you know, not rocket science. But if you believe yourself to be, you hold yourself in noble regard. You're going to get the things. You're going to attract the things. You're going to grow the things that are associated with that conception of you. That's it, dude. Ten minutes in, I'm done.